Hammer-ons and pull-offs are one of the most fundamental blues techniques and used extensively by the likes of Eric Clapton, Joe Bonamassa, Albert King, to name just three players. Hello and welcome back to the channel on our continuing voyage to become better blues players. My name's Mark and in today's lesson we're going to look at how blues players use hammer-ons and pull-offs. The lesson today is aimed a little bit more at the kind of the beginner end of the spectrum and what we're going to do is we're going to start by I'll go through the technique showing you exactly how we play hammer-ons and pull-offs. Then we'll look at how we might apply this in a blues context. And then you're going to see me play an example solo that has lots and lots of blue of hammer-ons and pull-offs over a 12 bar blues. And this will give you something to practice to really kind of work, uh, give you a workout for your hammer-ons and pull-offs. The licks are fairly easy. It's a slow tempo. We're a 12 bar in G today. So let's get on with the lesson. If you don't want to watch me talk through all the techniques and everything, you just want to skip ahead to the example, then you can skip ahead and there's tab on screen and you can work from that. You don't need to listen to me giving all the explanation. Okay, so let's get on with it. So what are we talking about hammer-on and a pull-off? Well, a hammer-on, as it sounds, is where we play a note by hammering onto it. And what we mean by that is we, uh, well, we do this. <laughs> Okay, so what's happening there? Um, for this example, what we'll do is we'll hold down the, uh, the third fret with our index finger. We're going to pick that, and then we're going to play the fifth fret by hammering onto it. And by hammering on, I mean we're literally just going to take our ring finger and slam it down on the fifth fret of the D string. So we get this. <laughs> And when we get there, we want to hold it and shake it. Okay, so a couple of things that beginners really struggle with this. First of all, we want both notes to sound out. So we're going to pick the first one on the fifth, third fret. Then when we hammer on, we're really slamming our finger down strong enough to make the string vibrate and so you get so it rings out. We're not tapping the string. Um, what we're doing is we're slamming it, our finger down and holding it tight so that the note rings out. It's very important that we get that second note to ring out. Well, I want to hold it and shake it. For this also, a thing that beginners often struggle with, we're going to use our fingertips. We really want to, when we slam that note down on the fifth fret, we want to be doing that with the, uh, the tip of our finger, not the fleshy bit of our finger. And if you do it right, it should sound like this. <laughs> Okay, so blues players will slam on, well, hammer on um, with these fingers two frets apart. But also, a really common approach in blues is where we hammer on from what we call a flat third to the major third. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we think of our minor pentatonic again, we're going to grab the fifth, sorry, the third fret of the G string, and we're actually going to do a one fret hammer on using our middle finger to hammer on to the fourth fret. So you get this. Okay, but in blues what we'll often do then is resolve to the root, which is the fifth of the uh, of the D string. So what we're going to do is we're going to start holding down a third of the G, hammering on to the fourth of the G, and then immediately hitting fifth of the D. So nice and slow you get this. Okay, so that's a fairly basic technique. Um, another technique that blues players will actually use with this hammer on is um, what we call like a rake. So where we're gonna push through a number of strings to hit that one. In fact, I'm gonna do this one here for now because this might be easier to show. We're gonna start index finger on our sixth fret. We're gonna hammer on to the seventh fret. We're on the B string here. But what we're gonna do is, importantly, we're gonna mute those other strings. We don't want those other strings to ring out. So you're gonna push through them, but mute them. You can mute them. 
using thumb, using the palm of this hand, other things. Um, but that's kind of important that you, you don't want to ring out like this because that sounds terrible. You want to push through them, but immediately have them muted. Okay, so that's something that blues players often do as well. And there's an example of one of those in the solo. Um, that's a little bit more uh, advanced. If you're just new to hammer on and pull offs, don't worry about that for now. Okay, so um, that's the hammer on technique. The pull off technique is the opposite. We're going to start with, um, let's do this on the D string, G string, sorry, fifth fret. And we're going to pull off from the fifth fret to the third fret. So we're going to hold down both notes in preparation for it. And then we're going to pull off from the fifth fret to the third fret. Now, the important thing with this is we're not just releasing that, that fifth fret. Because if we do, it'll kind of, well, it won't really work. If we just let off the pressure, it goes like this. <laughs> And we don't want that, we want the second note to sound. So we're not just releasing. What we're doing is we're actually flicking with the fingertip on the fifth fret to make the string resonate. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, resonate, I guess that's the right word, isn't it? Vibrate, that's the word I was going for. So what we do is, um, in fact, Justin Sandico, if you've ever seen his channel, he's a brilliant teacher. He doesn't even call these pull-offs, he calls them flick-offs. And that's a much better description for what we're doing here. We're using our fingertip tip to flick it. I'm gonna do this without even picking the first note, okay? And you should, I'm gonna mute the other strings, but I'm just gonna flick it. So that's the kind of movement that we're getting so that the flick alone causes this third fret to vibrate. So the actual technique is we pick the fifth fret, but then pull off our kind of flick off with such power that it causes the string to vibrate and the third fret resonates, uh, vibrates. <laughs> Uh, right, so what we can then do is we can combine hammering on and pulling off. So I'm going to start third fret index finger. I'm going to hammer on and pull off. This is on the G string. So I'm going to hammer on to the fifth, pull off, and then resolve to uh, the fifth on the D string. <laughs> And as you get practiced at it and you get better at it, um, you can basically do it faster. And when you hear um, like players like Bonamassa and Clapton, where um, I'm thinking particularly Clapton in the kind of the cream era, he used an awful lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs to get speed uh, into his playing. And as you can hear, you can actually start getting, um, yeah, get, building up a lot of speed by doing these hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay, I think we've covered everything. That's like the basic technique. What I'll do now is I'm going, to leave, I'm going to give you an example. So here's me playing a solo I composed, trying to make it as simple and as easy as possible, but including as many hammer-ons and pull-offs as I could. Um, and then we'll come back on the other side and I'll pull all the licks apart and show you them one by one. And it's, it'll give you something really good to practice to, to practice your hammer-ons and pull-offs. To be, all, to be honest, I'd never normally play a guitar solo that just focused on one technique like this so much, um, but it's a, it'll be a good practice routine. So, um, yeah, here's the example.
Okay, so that was the example. If you would like a free copy of the tab that accompanies this lesson, that transcribes the whole solo, then send me an email, my details are in the description below, and ask for the tab for, let's call this one, Beginner Hammer Workout in G. Beginner Hammer Workout in G. Um, sounds more like a, a DIY video, doesn't it? But never mind. Yeah, Beginner Hammer Workout in G. If you ask for that, next time I'm online, I will simply reply to your email and attach the PDF. Um, to the email. The tab is paid for by the Patreon supporters and for that they get some extra lessons and uh, they get to help shape this. In fact, this lesson or was kind of requested by the Patreon supporters. They told me that I hadn't done enough kind of beginner lessons recently and so I stopped the, this, um, the plans I had and started doing this. So Patreon supporters, thank you for recommending doing some beginner lessons. Okay, on, on with the, the licks. What I'll do now is I'm going to pull those licks apart and show you them one by one, nice and easy and clear. Or as, as clear as I can make it, anyway. Okay, so lick one starts and it goes like this. Okay, so if you want to play along with the, with the back and track, the back and track starts with a four count, a one bar uh, of four beat count. One, two, three. And then on the four, we're playing four and a one. So that's the timing. So the lick actually begins before. And what we're doing is we're sliding in and we're playing this little figure to start with. And then we get the hammer on. Okay, so there's the hammer on there. And again, using the underside of our fingers and all the other things to try and mute the other strings. Okay, so that was lick one, nice and easy. That's over the G7 chord. Then the chord progression moves to a C7 and we play this. Okay, so if you're a beginner, you might not be ready to do that kind of that big push where we mute all of the strings and just let that one string ring out. Um, if you want a kind of an easier way to start with this, don't worry about the other strings, just play a little more gently and just play, um, just play the notes themselves. So you get this. Okay, and the important with, thing with this is that we've got the three hammer-ons on that G string, and then we've got a hammer on and pull off together. So you get the three hammer ons, and each of those is just straight on the beat, so it's nice and easy. And then we get this. So I'll do that nice and slow. So you gotta get the hammer on and pull off really ringing out nice. And then we just end with a little upstroke stab there. Okay, so that was lick two. Lick three then um, go is, is over the G7 chord and it goes like this. Okay, I'll do it nice and slow. Okay, that last note, you can play it with either the, index, the, the little finger or the ring finger, it doesn't really matter. But the important point with this one is we're doing that little one bar hammer on. So th holding down three, hitting four, and then working up three and three on the, uh, the B and E strings. So you get this. Okay, uh, then we get to lick four. Lick four is now over the C7 chord, and we get this. Nice and slow. Okay, and then we're up to lick five, also over the C7 chord, and that goes like this. Okay, nice and slow. One more time, nice and slow. Okay, 
and you notice that last hammer on there, we're gonna hold that and shake it for a while. But that should give you a good little practice of hammering on uh, between those two strings, the D and the G string. Okay, then we get lick, where are we? Lick, five, lick six. This is a really simple one. It's the one we, we looked at earlier, and it goes like this. Okay, the only tricky thing with this is that hammer on from three to four happens quite quick before we then resolve to five. And the other tricky thing about this is the timing. Because the important thing with this is we're aiming to land that fifth fret D string as the chord changes to the G. So you get this. Nice and slow. And it's that final note that you wanna land as the chord changes. Um, so we're listening to the back and track, hearing when it is, hearing when the drummer's gonna land on that first beat of the next bar. Okay, and basically then, as the solo goes on, we hold that note for a whole bar, and then we just have a bar off. We have a bar free, we just count one, two, three, four, before coming in with the next lick. Now, this is lick seven, this is the longest lick in this example, and this is the one that's really gonna give us our hammer on and pull off um, workout. It goes like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'll take you through that nice and slow and easy. It starts with this little figure where we're pulling off six to three on the B string before hitting five to th five on a D, sorry, five on the G back to three on the B. I've just made that sound way more complicated than it is. It's actually this. Okay. So it's only the first of those, uh, those first two notes that are, where you've got to pull off. Okay. So what we're then going to do is we're going to hit this three again and then play the whole thing again. So you get this. And again. Okay, now when I played this uh, in the example, I did that last five on the uh, on the G string. I did give it a little bend. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, but anyway, that first section again, nice and slow, goes like this. So I did the little bend that time. Okay, so then what we do is we land back on the five. We pick that and then we then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play five, three to five and off as a hammer onto a pull off. So you get this. Okay. And then um, we land five on the on the D string, three on the G, back to five on the G on the D, and then off to three, but all picked. And then what we do is we go three to five on the D string with the kind of proper slammer, slamming on. Okay, so all the way through lick seven, nice and slow. Now I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use my little finger when I'm pulling off between the sixth and the third fret. You can do it using the third, using your ring finger if it's easier. Um, I'm gonna use my, my, actually I'll do it twice, I'll do it one, once each. So here it is, nice and slow, little finger. Okay, and now I'll do it with my ring finger. Okay, then we're up to lick eight, um, and lick eight goes like this. Okay, so what we're doing is we're actually gonna start with a double stop. I'm using ring finger, it's index finger, sorry, index finger and middle finger. Index finger is on the B string, uh, middle finger is on the G string, playing two notes together. And um, <clears throat> we slide in and hit that four times. Okay, and then I'm hammering on. Um, this is the start of the next bar. Hammering on from, where are we? Um, six to eight. 
and want to hold that and give it a shake. That really is, I mean, I've heard like Stevie Ray and people, uh, Albert King, um, those kind of players do that. Again, if you want to be a bit more advanced, you can mute the other strings and push through them. Okay, but that's it, that's all the licks. If you're a beginner and you're new to this hammer and on, I'm pulling off, there's a lot in there for you to practice. Once you've got the basic technique of slamming your finger down and making the notes ring out or flicking them off and making the notes ring out, this will be a really good practice exercise for you. Um, I always find it's better to practice things in a musical context rather than just scales. I remember years ago learning practicing hammer-ons and pull-offs, uh, well, hammer-ons three notes per string like this. <laughs> Okay, you can now, I can now hammer on and pull off with, uh, and, and do that in reverse for pull offs and things. I can now hammer on and pull off with three, uh, with, uh, three notes per string. I never use that in a musical context because it doesn't sound like the blues. What I've tried to do here is give you an example that'll really work out your, uh, your hammer on and pull offs, but in a way that you can then actually use it in a musical context. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you like this and would like other beginner style lessons focusing on a particular technique, I'm thinking I could do one on bends, I could do something maybe on slides and vibrato, um, some other things. If this is useful for you, please leave me a comment and let me know. Um, it's really good to get feedback so I can help build lessons that you actually want to watch and find useful. And most importantly, help you become a better blues player. Okay, so until next time, big thank you to the Patreon supporters. If you haven't done already, please like, subscribe, um, and all of those kind of things. Big thank you to the, everybody who leaves a tip in my PayPal tip jar, because between the tip jar and, uh, and Patreon, that's the only thing that keeps this channel going. So big thank you to everyone who does that. Take care. I'm going to leave you now with the names of the Patreon supporters as a way of saying thank you to them, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>